listen, there was there was a, a homicide in on the Upper East Side in a restaurant. One of the dishwashers stabbed the cook. Right? He takes the he leaves the restaurant. He takes the seven train home. Guess who's searching the garbage train on the seven train by Shea Stadium at the end of the line? You were myself and Mike Ahern <laughs> in a Tyvek suit. We're climbing through the dumpsters of the garbage train of the seven line. Oh my god! Looking for weapons and clothes at you like one in the morning, on a July night. You probably oh. found some big rats. Um, it was the worst thing I pretty much ever have done in the police department in my 25 year career. Search well, we, the end of the line garbage train on the seven train. We had a double murder on 101st Street off of Park, and you know what's at Park at a 101st and Park? What's there? The tunnels are there, right? That's on North. The train, Metro. Yeah, the train. The yeah. So the chief of detectives um, ordered us to search the tracks for a knife because the, the two people were stabbed to death. Okay. So I was like, oh, oh, I, I mean, you, you ordered me to do it. I'm going to do it, right? So I called uh, Metro North, and I, I, this is like when you know you have unbelievable power. This is Sergeant Cannon from Manhattan North Homicide Squad. Could you shut the electricity off of the train. I got to go down on the tracks. They did it. They did, they did it. it. No, sure, no problem. Power. How powerful you feel. Wow. <laughs> I had the power to shut off the electricity. But one of the things you got to be careful, that train is silent as hell at that location. Yeah, yeah. It's not a subway. It comes flying to it about 80 miles an hour. And, you know, I, you know, I waited until I crawled out and I said, okay, you can turn the electricity back on. And then it dips to the tunnel at 96th Street, right? Yeah. It goes down into the tunnel. Yeah, that thing's flying. It's flying. And I was like, wow, thank God I crawled out of the damn tracks before. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I said, you may turn the electricity back on. And, yeah, and there's hundreds of people waiting for you to turn the train yeah, back pissed on. pissed off like, well, who, 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 <laughs> well, they always say when the train's late, it's police activity, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love that. That night there was some uh, police activity that turned the electricity off. What yeah. power, you know, how powerful I felt, man. Yeah. I went home. Tell you, listen, you got to get it done. You get it done, man. Yeah, That's it. Done. So um, another, another time we had, uh, in the same case, actually, he ordered us to um, have Harbor come by the Willis Avenue Bridge mm -hmm. and search there, too, for, like, uh, have scuba dive and search for a knife under the, so, like, here I am, I call Harbor, and I'm like, yes, yeah, so I go to Chief of Detectives told me to tell you <laughs> to do this. In the Search way. the bottom of the East River for a knife? Is that what yes. you just said? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. And they, weren't, they weren't happy, but, you know, that uh, magic word chief. They went for a swim and came back on the boat. <laughs> yeah, that magic word chief. Oh, my God. That's from out there, you know. I tell you the truth. I've seen um, scuba recover guns when you say, there's no way. And they go, ask the guy where he threw it. And you say, what'd you do? He goes right around over there. They dive and they find it. I'm like, how? Oh, and they go down. I mean, how could they see two feet in front of them? One foot. In I front don't of know, them. but they, they did find it, you know. And I was like, that's that's, that's just incredible, you know. Yeah. I guess if it's not deep, maybe you got a shot. I don't know. Maybe there's no way in the incredible. world they're gonna find this damn knife, you know. But they, yeah, yeah. See how we buff out in other stories. This has nothing to do with your. It has dad. nothing to do with Shakter and uh, Moultrie, does it? Uh, it, it's interesting, you know, because it is. It is. Uh, you got forever. You and th this case that you worked on with yeah. the guy getting attacked by the dogs, mm -hmm. you obviously used all the skills that you had learned on the police department A, in anti crime, B, as an investigator. And sure. you brought all of those skills together to bring a pretty damn good investigation together, which resulted in one guy getting 10 years and one guy getting seven years in a case that seemed like, wow. We're going to really use all these resources on this case. Right. Right. So, you know, it, it, it look looking back, like it, it was a, it was a fun case to work to um, that, you know, it was one of the fun ones. It, it wasn't, you know, a, a, a homicide where, you know, there's a victim, there's somebody dead, you feel bad for the family. You know, it wasn't one of those. It was actually kind of fun working this case, right. you know, putting it all together. We had a lot of laughs doing it. You know, we, we made some money uh, with the wiretaps and, and everything else. And I made some new friends down at the DA's office in the investigator squad there. So um, we did a good job. And we, we you got, got you know something. You got to do a penis lineup, too. And I got to take a picture <laughs> uh, in the room uh, with some uh, porn, some photography porn of it, man. But I, I believe um, we also got some kind of an award for it from, oh a, from the DA's office. Oh, yeah. It was, you know, it was, it was crazy. And it got me out of catching cases for you know a while. Something? 
the most innocuous cases get the biggest uh, uh, awards, you know? They do. They, oh, they do, you know. This guy was attacked by a dog off a leash. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's give them the Medal of Valor for that yeah. one. You know? Oh, per, Perham was very happy about it. It made him look good. You know, after you know, it went down so much, to, you there know. There was so much politics behind that case. It was yeah. It was in Central yeah. Park, right? Uh, it was in Central The initial attack was in so Central, Central Park. Central Park, which yep. is the oasis of New York City. Anything right. happens in Central Park, you know, they want to bring in, you know, aviation. They want to bring in an aircraft carrier. They want to bring yeah, in, sure. you know, everyone and their brother to work the case. And then the players were from the Upper West, upper, excuse me, Upper East Side, you know. Yeah. And just say Upper East Side at 1 PP and they get all, oh, my God. What? Yeah, yeah. Upper but then, you know, I'm sitting there on a Sunday night and this guy comes in and I'm listening to him like, oh, is, you know, is this a load of shit? Is this guy going to come back? Like, I'm almost thinking a shit can in it. And then I just say, nah, this seems pretty good. This seems legit. You know, why is he here? I mean, yeah, he wants, he said he wanted to work off his parole. You know, yes. he, he, he came, you know, he was forthright with that. And, um, you know, I said, all right, you know, and I talked to him for a while and he came back the next day and, you know, he was legit, the guy. Yeah. Legit, you know? for, our, for our fans, the term shit can is another cop <laughs> colloquial expression, yeah. which means <laughs> Just get rid of the case. Just get rid of this guy because he's not he's but, not making sense. It's another great cop colloquialism shit can. I'm gonna shit can this job. Throw yeah. it into the garbage pail, right? Right, right. There's so many great copisms. We should do a show on that one day. Just uh, yeah. great... some cops shit can more jobs than other cops do. That's that's <laughs> true. That's yeah. true. But this so, one for well, some reason you didn't shit can it, you wound up you wound up running with it. Yeah. And there was only like three of us in the squad that night. You know, like I said, it was a Sunday night, slow, slow night, 10 o'clock at night. And he comes walking through the door with this tale of woe. (laughs) (laughs) Support your local police, you know. And and, and, you know, it's funny. Why did he come to the 19th precinct? We were on 67th Street. Maybe because the guy lived on the upper. I don't even know at that time if he even knew where the guy lived. Maybe he did, I guess. You know, I don't remember. You know, I'm sure I asked him why. You know, well, what brought you to this place? And it's probably because Constantine lived. He had to probably look up. Oh, I wonder what precinct that is. Right, I'm talking right. about Johnson, the parole eight. Sure. You know? so Out of all the sleazy precincts in the world, why <laughs> did you have to come to the Upper East Side on a Sunday <laughs> night? At well, you know, it's funny. The Upper East Side, we spoke about it, one of the wealthiest communities in the world. But yet, almost all New York City police precincts are shitholes. They just no, we- do not spend the money to upkeep them. Many times... They, they have one cleaner that cleans wow. the same spot with the filthy wood. Our place was disgusting. Uh, disgusting, you know. There's rats the size of small ponies, you know. Well, it's funny you say that. A lot of the homicide and old cases were in the basement, kept in the basement. So um, Cold Case came one, one day and pulled a, a box. It was in the basement. I helped them look for it. And we found the box, and it was the, the DD5s were chewed to shit. Oh you couldn't God. even put them together. And there were several boxes around it, they were chewed up by rats. So it was Hearts, you know? Ma- Hearts Mountain rat food, the case yeah, came, right? pretty much. But yeah, just think, you know, you get a lead on the case, you're looking for the original paperwork and, and rats ate it. Rats ate my paperwork. <laughs> well, you think about that, you know, uh, and uh, when we first, well, started in the Bureau, they, they had uh, DD5s on carbons, like what, seven copies or was it? Oh, I remember typing, I'm sure. And the, the yeah. police administrative aide would rip the cases and break them down and send them to all different units. Yep. Very time consuming, right? Yep. I mean, easy to lose all a case. Uh, cases were stored, like Tom just said, in the basement where they'd get yeah. floods and yep. rats would eat the cases, you know. Yep. But you know I- something? They, they don't want to pay for it. They don't want to pay for it. Well, it's funny. I had complainants come in, and they'd be sitting at my desk. They were just uh, robbed. Or burned, and I'm typing. They're like, are you really still using a typewriter? Right. With <laughs> paper? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, you don't have computers? I'm like, no. They're like, we're going to buy this place computers. Like, they would offer to buy computers right. for us. They're like, well, what do you need, 10, 15 of them? You guys cannot be using carbon paper still. I'm like, yeah. We were the only ones keeping the carbon paper industry. In I, I remember that because I used to teach at um, CIC at the yeah. Academy. And at the time I was in the two, three squad and we hadn't gotten our computers yet, but some of like Brooklyn and the Bronx had already. Okay. And I started talking about what I was used to, you know, and they go, Oh, we have computers. We have the DD five system. I was like, Oh, you do. 
I don't um, even know about I'm teaching here. I don't even know about that yet. Yeah, it's crazy. And I never believed when they said every detective is going to have his own station. I was like, no way. There's no yeah, way. It's I, never going to happen. But you know something? I think it happened because of um, they got federal money, Safe Street sure. City. Because I don't believe they would ever pay for that if it's in the. In but the we were the last to get on board. It took us a long time to get computers. I mean, we were still using typewriters. We used to steal ribbons from each other. I if remember. Ribbon, if we couldn't even get ribbons for the typewriters. Or I remember yeah. those balls. People would take them off the typewriter. Of course. Them. Listen, when I went home at night, the ribbon and the ball came out in my locked drawer at my desk. Because when I come in in the morning, somebody else had had it. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm serious. That is, that is a fact. You know, it's yeah. funny. We just interviewed a guy on Police Off the Cuff. Um, Michael Cilio, who was a pilot in aviation. Mm -hmm. And he, that, yes. he was talking about all these great helicopters they had. And I remember it was either uh, 99, 2000, 2001 in the 23 squad. We had no cars, zero cars. So we were getting shootings and murders and we would have to ask patrol to drive us there. Uh, okay. And it, they just, there was just no car. And then a, a, this one boss came in, I won't mention his name, and he became like, the Manhattan North um, vehicle coordinator. And he had wound up like getting us three cars, but we literally had no cars. That's we, we were walking to jobs. How pathetic is that? This is the New York City Police Department, the biggest and best police department in the world. Yeah. And we had no cars. Well, listen, while you, when you were on patrol, Billy, how about the milk crates holding up the seats? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I had several of those cars. I mean, even the patrol cars were beat to shit. Well, that's because of the fat cops that shouldn't be in there. True, that would push him back on the seat. Right, they would the destroy seat. the seat, right? And then yep. They, they, yeah. they should have just been banned from radio cars, right? But you couldn't get them fixed. It took a while to get the damn thing wow. fixed. Well, man. people were reluctant to get them fixed because you put a car out of service. Service, that means you're walking. That's true. Whatever too. sector had that car, guess what? You're walking. The you're walking until the car cars. comes back. That's yeah. why to have a, a connection at, at a the motor transport, oh it was God. like the best connection to have. You know, if you had a friend out there to make the call and you get the car back quick. Unbelievable. And that, that's a contract. Well, you know, in anti crime, I remember if the car needed servicing, I put it out. You know what I mean? The other mm -hmm. team would drive when the brakes were screaming. You could hear, right. you know what, the disc brakes, when, yep. when you know you need them, even when you're not pressing on the brake, you hear the squeaking. Yep. These guys would drive it until the drums fell off, you know? Yep. Yeah. And no, I was just like, no, take the car out, because that causes more damage. You got to get you know? hurt. Yeah, you, yeah. You can go to brake, and you're not going to be too. able to. That too, yeah. but you're also destroying the drums, you know? Oh, sure. Just sure. send the car out to get fixed. You know, yeah. we can walk for a couple of days, you know. It's a, it's amazing, you know, really what we've put up with, you know, between the typewriters, the ribbons, the cars, and, you know, the the, the, the carbon paper, you know, <laughs> you know ridiculous. ridiculous. And then so, computers came and it was great. But then it was like a double-edged sword because now they can look at your case from downtown, right? That's true. I, I always wondered yeah. about the um, – the security of the DD5 system because sure. and for our fans and people that aren't familiar with how police departments work, when a detective has a case, he types what's called a DD5, which is a complaint follow-up that goes into a big case folder. There's some heavy duty confidential information in those yeah. case folders. And sure. if anyone on the police department has access to, to it, they could compromise the case very easily. Sure. You know, some say some, boss in Brooklyn could be his brother is wanted in Manhattan, right. you know? Yep. Who do you think he's loyal to, his brother or to the police department? I'm sure, I'm sure they've caught cops doing that, yeah. I, I yeah. would imagine they, they've caught cops doing and that. And it could also yeah. be, you know, the information could be a matter of life and death, you know? Mm -hmm. Really yeah. could be if it gets into the wrong hands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at the cases of um, the mafia cops. Um, sure. Cara Kappa yep. had access to heavy duty confidential information which yeah. he was feeding to the mob right scary yeah, stuff, you know? yeah it's scary and now it's uh now they have tablets you go out you know you're carrying a, a, a not a laptop but an ipad now you know it's insane. well that you know that technology will save someone's life though too because you know if you're going to a location and say oh the guy at that location just got out of prison he did 20, 25 years for murder, you know, he they, they've been there for a domestic violence, you know, so that could save your life. Yeah, before they go into the building, they know what right. they're walking into, uh, for sure, it, which is a good thing, yeah. That and they also good. may even have a picture of the perpetrator on their, At their fingertips. Yeah. yeah. 
at their fingertips. You can get a lot of stuff done right when you're in the building. Yeah. Remember, you know? remember they first you started using the real time crime center. Oh, pull the van up and they wanted to put the cord through some apartment's window. Could we use hey. it? <laughs> I was like, there is no class on this department. You're uh, electricity from civilians. That was that was a great a great thing. That to call down there was, you know, come on, you know, I'll call, I'll call you back. They used to yeah. say, I'll call you back. And then Manhattan North had the most shootings, the most violence, and they give us the shitty real time crime center van, and they give the South the state of the art, you know. Yeah, yeah, because oh. it looked better. Yeah, it's like yeah. unbelievable, you know. They had a they had a beautiful headquarters down there too, like mm. you know, with all the computers. I went there once, and uh, it was beautiful, state of the art equipment. Yeah. But the man was shit that we had. Yeah. The North was. And they were the, never around. No, they were but the North around. was the bastard stepchild, you know. Oh sure. Oh, keep keep the good. The, the, does the South Van have a coffee pot? That <laughs> 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 in the South. Yeah. Is there a donut yeah. drop? <laughs> uh, the North gets, you know, they always got shit on compared to the South. You know that. Yeah, it's, it's typical. Well, um, Tom, this was a, a great uh, experience. As uh, usual, you don't disappoint. This oh, uh, is a great, I mean, I love to also reminisce about some of this stuff. Yeah, with, there's so many fun things, right? And yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what a lot of the cops that listen to us, they love hearing the stories because they sort of commiserate with us about these these old stories and they laugh about, you know, not having a car, you know, aviation hey. getting brand new, you know, $3 million helicopters, just six yep. of them, you know, but we can't get a Ford Crown Victoria. Or well, me having a dog bite case and a team of detectives. All right. right. Oh, it's an undercover case. Case. <laughs> On the Upper East Side. On the Upper East Side. On the Upper East Side. Task force to it. It's like, yeah. what? Are you kidding me? I know. Because you man, you have a real case. You can't even get the, that kind of manpower. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's incredible. But, uh, this is what, you know, something, this would be funny. This is the kind of case that they would like to, they, you'll find them, someone will steal this case from us and go on law and order with it, you know? Yeah. Oh, we I'm still, still waiting for the phone call, Bill, for, for the Crimes case. I'm still waiting for the uh, Hollywood producers to call. I don't know what happened, man. I, 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 I don't know. I thought, I, thought, I thought you promised me, Bill. <laughs> I thought they listened to that case and said, let's do it again. Let's. Yeah. Let's, I was going to give you a cut. Yeah, you let's in. cast some new actors. Let's do that case. It was so yeah. much fun, you know? But you know what's funny? Just like this case, this one will get picked up by them. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's an unusual case, and it's like yeah. it's, there could be a lot of humor in this, you know. Yeah, it, it, and it was. We had, a, you know, it was it was funny at times and stupid at times, and you know, it had every element that you would want a case: interesting, boring. You yeah, know, right. Listen to these that's, idiots on the phone. That's what uh, what makes police work interesting is there's there's right. a lot of humor involved and there's a lot of human interaction and yeah kinds of drama but uh, yeah it is it, it's great look it, it, I miss it it's the it, it it was the best job in the in the world um, as far as like you know the the best uh, is saying you know that you had front row seats to the best show on earth and that well, is true that's, that's very true you know it really I, I hated, is true. I hated that expression but it it was true but it really it, it really encapsulates you know, encapsulates uh, that, the job. It really does. You miss that. You miss yeah, that. I mean, you have stories and just also the interaction and the kidding and the ribbing among cops. Is, right. And we, and you were the best at that. <laughs> there's, no, there's no question. The funniest stuff, yeah, it comes yeah. when you walk into the squad, you know? Yeah. Yep. Anyone got a uh, gun cloth and some gun oil? I, I need my rack polished. You know? <laughs> Where's the bucket? Where's the bucket in this squad? <laughs> That's right. A lot of fun. But, uh, All right, so we're, we actually went past an hour on this and uh, just reminisced and had some really good uh, fun. And again, right. Tom Hovigen, first grade detective, retired out of the 19th precinct. This yeah. has been Real Crime Stories. This is actually episode number 11. I'm your host, Bill Cannon. Thank you very much for listening. So and next- thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me on. It was great. It's always fun to talk to you. You're the best, man. You're the best. Yeah. We'll probably have to have you back in here. You tell great stories. Uh, Whenever you want. Um, It'd be a pleasure. All right, man. Take care. Take care, Billy.